I can promise you that as a Microsoft dev or a CE consultant, you are not using this feature enough in your flows. What am I talking about? I'm talking about configuring the run after in Power Automate. The run after feature allows you to invoke specific actions dependent on the previous action. What do I mean by that? This feature is useful when you need an action in your flow to only happen when a previous action develops in a certain way. But what does that mean? In Power Automate, each action stores a little bit of information on the outcome of that action. So specifically on if the action was successful, failed, skipped, or timed out. Then depending on that information, you can have your following actions do something. So most commonly and by default, the configured run after is if the previous action is successful. This is when you're gonna get several green check marks on all your different actions. If a user wanted to invoke a specific action, if the previous action failed, that would be done using the run after. We are gonna have some useful examples of when configuring the run after would be beneficial in the real world and on different client projects. So make sure you stick to the end of the video to hear what those are, but first, let's hop into the demo. I've set up a flow here with a trigger, an initialized variable, and then a couple Dataverse actions but we want our flow to send an email when our update a row action fails. So we're gonna go ahead and create an action, send an email action, and if I quickly fill this out, So now we have our send an email action, but because of the email, we only want this to be sent when the update a row action fails. This may fail for several reasons. Say there is an input parameter that is missing in the data or the row does not exist or it's been deleted, then this action is going to fail and we want an email to be sent to say the support team when that happens. So that can be done by using the configure run after. Now there's a sneaky little setting in here. If you click on these three dots, you're going to see that one of the options is the configure run after here. And when you click on that, then it's gonna open up this box that's gonna have four different options. Is successful is the default, and if the previous action runs successfully, then it's gonna do the next action. Has failed is if the previous action failed for any type except for timing out. Is skipped is when an action is skipped. Actions are skipped either when a condition is not met or when a previous action before it fails. Lastly, has timed out. This can happen if the call to the back end times out, which is 120 seconds, or for long running actions such as approvals after 30 days. To configure the run after command, you can select either one of the options or multiple options from the following list. As you can see here, you can select as many or as few as you would like, but you do have to select at least one because if you don't have any selected, you're gonna get this error here saying at least one status needs to be checked. So again, for our example, we're gonna go ahead and select has failed and when you click done, you're gonna see that there is now a red dotted arrow going from the update a row to the send an email, as opposed to the typical gray solid arrow seen here. You're gonna get this arrow regardless of the type of run after. So now it was skipped or has timed out, you're gonna get that red arrow. But if you are to switch it back to successful, it's gonna become gray once again. So let's put it back to has failed for our example. Now it is important to note that configure run after can be done on an action that is not the final action. So hopping back into the demo, you can see if we look at our get a row by ID action, you can see that we can also configure the run after for this. So say for the sake of the example, we want the row by ID to only run after the initialized variable step has failed or is skipped. And this is gonna show the same red dotted arrow as the send an email notification. Once you've selected which option you would like, you have successfully implemented run after into your flow. It's really cool to know that this is available to have throughout your flow, not just the end. I know typically this is really popular with error handling, but this might be really applicable in other situations that we're gonna cover at the end of the video. So you can see here, I've reverted our changes and now just the send an email notification is the only action with a configure run after. And let's go ahead and save and test our flow to see this run in real time. 
After a few seconds, our flow has ran successfully, and you can see that by looking at the updated row action, we have a green check mark on that, meaning that that action was successful. Because that was successful and the send an email notification was to only run after that has failed, you can see that our send an email step was skipped by this gray X here. And if we click and open it, you can see that it's gonna read that the run after condition for the action update a row is not satisfied. It expected a status of failed, but got an actual value of succeeded. Now in another example, I've set up the data in a way that is going to force the update a row action to fail. So for the sake of our example, we can see what's gonna happen if this action fails and then that email is sent. So looking back at our demo, we're gonna save and test. And again, after just a few seconds, you can see here that by looking at our flow, this update a row action failed by this red exclamation point. And now instead of a gray X, you can see that on the send an email notification step, we have a green checkbox. This green checkbox is gonna show that this step was ran successfully and that that email was sent. This is a good spot to note that if you have a failed action step in your flow, but the previous action is still completed successfully, your flow is gonna be considered a successful run. So for record keeping, it's important to know that just because a flow run may say successful, that does not mean that all of the actions were successful if you're using configure run after. So what are some examples that this may actually be useful to implement into your flows? First example is gonna be if you have a business critical flow or a business critical action. What do I mean by business critical? I'm gonna mean that something that is being done in this flow is fundamental to the client system that regardless if a previous action in the flow fails, you need this action to happen no matter what. That may be creating a row or updating a row or notifying someone, etc. You should use configure run after to ensure that even if a previous action fails or a series of previous action fails, that business critical step is still going to happen. This is only gonna be achieved using configure run after. A second example and a more common one is gonna be using error handling. So I have experience on a project where every one of our flows, we had error handling. So specifically, if a flow run failed, we then added that flow run record to an Excel doc and that Excel doc was then shared on a daily basis to the client support team. There's a handy little action called a scope action that I wanna show you. So back in our demo, if you click on a plus and search up scope in the actions, you're gonna find this orange scope control. Now the scope control is simply just a container. It does not add any code to your actions that are in the scope, but this can be really handy because you can configure run after for if the scope now fails. So how is that different than using a configure run after for just the previous action? Well now if several actions are in the scope and any of those actions in the scope fail, then the scope container is going to fail, which is then going to in turn trigger the configure run after failed action. I hope this is making sense. To take this one step further, you can even create a second scope and we'll call it error handling. And say you want multiple actions to be taken if a flow fails. Say we want to send an email and say we want to update or add a row to an Excel doc of the flow run. And just for the sake of example, let's say that we have a data first action as well. So now if we click on configure run after on our error handling scope, you can see that we can select it to be failed, you will get the same red dotted arrow to delineate that when the scope fails, error handling is going to be run. And now if any action in that scope fails, all of these actions in the error handling will then be taken. A final good example is if you are utilizing parallel actions in your flow. Parallel actions are gonna be when you have several actions taking place simultaneously. But say you have an ask where you need a specific action to happen only if both parallel simultaneous actions are successful or if both simultaneous actions have failed, then you want this to happen. You can use configure run after to work for parallel actions as well. I hope you find this video useful as this is a tool that is already in Power Automate. 
it is there and ready to be used and I can honestly say I do not utilize it enough. The configure run after is a phenomenal way to bulletproof your flows, particularly if they are what you would deem business critical. That way they can always ensure that you're gonna have successful runs, that the necessary steps that have to happen within a flow are going to happen. If you learned anything or found anything insightful today, put it down in the comments down below. And as always, love your support for sticking to the end of the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Griffin Lickfelt, and this is the Citizen Developer Channel. We're gonna be continuing to cover interesting topics around the Power Platform, Microsoft Dynamics, CE Consulting, so make sure you subscribe and catch the rest of the videos. And as always, see you in the next one.